In this lesson, I want to talk about Microsoft Entra. Microsoft Entra is a new suite of identity-related solutions. So many of the components of Entra you would have heard of before. It's just now they're under this umbrella of Microsoft Entra. Now Microsoft Entra does have its own portal. So I could jump over and look at the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. Here we can see its URL is entra.microsoft.com. And the goal is through this one interface, I can see all of the different components that make up Entra. However, I could still use existing interfaces. For example, Azure Active Directory is still under my regular portal.azure.com. The Entra portal just really focuses on all of those identity related solutions. And we can see them all listed here in this overview page. And so what is in Microsoft Entra? So the first one is Azure Active Directory. And the functionality has not changed. So we have the idea of we have an Azure AD tenant. And this is our identity provider. We have objects for our users, for computers, for applications. And then as a user, I authenticate to my Azure Active Directory and then many different applications. This could be in Azure, it could be Office, it could be third parties. So these other solutions trust my Azure AD and then I get nice features like single sign-on. There's capabilities like conditional access to apply policy. But Azure AD, hey, it's part of Microsoft Entra. Then we also have this component called Verified ID. So Verified ID is all about the idea of decentralized identities and decentralized identifiers that represent some object. Now with Verified ID, the point is that I am now in the middle. If we looked at Azure AD, well, who's in the middle is Azure AD. And then I use it, but it's all about the Azure Active Directory. With Verified Identity, I have some software wallet. This could be, for example, the Microsoft Authenticator app. And the way this works is certain institutions, it could be the government, it could be a company I work for, whatever that is, they're going to create these verifiable credentials that make certain claims about me. And they're going to issue it to me. So they issue this verifiable credential to me. And then if there's some other party that I want to prove something about myself, I can do a verifiable presentation and I get to pick, and this is the key point, I am in control of these verifiable credentials, which is a certain type, and then these can, and they can be verified. So the whole point here is all of this is built on some trust system. Now, there are many different trust systems available. The common one people will think of is a blockchain like, um, Bitcoin, for example, and there are ones based on blockchains, but there are other methods of doing this as well. But the key point is they can verify through this ledger, and when they issue it, they have certain objects in there as well. But the key point here is Microsoft Entra allows me as an organization to both issue and verify those verifiable credentials. So this is part of the Microsoft Entra as well. Another component of Microsoft Entra is permissions management. And this was the Cloud Knox acquisition. So this is based around the idea of, well, there's different clouds. Obviously we think about Azure, but there are really three big clouds today. I can think of Azure, I could think of AWS, and I could think of Google Cloud Platform. And as a user, I have permissions, maybe on one or more of these clouds. So there's some sort of role-based access control of what I can do. 
And what tends to happen over time is they get more and more permissions. We have more than we need. So what permissions management does is first of all, it can help me inventory the permissions across all of these different clouds that users or service principles, i.e. an identity used by an application has. It can work out, okay, well, what are they actually using? So what is the access use? So you have all these permissions, but you're using this tiny, tiny subset. Which ones might be considered risky? And then it can right size. So it can create custom roles that give you just enough permission to what you're actually using. And it can even support things like on-demand elevation. Now we have seen on-demand elevation with things like privilege identity management, but that's only for Azure and Azure Active Directory. And this is more ad hoc. So it's not saying I'm planning on probably want to use, hey, I just need to, for this instant in time, get these extra permissions. So this permissions management allows me to do that over these different clouds as well. And I mentioned this idea of, well, hey, applications have identities in there as well. And so one of the other big areas of functionality is around this idea of those workload identities. I have a service principle. I have a managed identity for an Azure resource. But they typically have fairly high privileges because they're, they're doing maybe important tasks that need higher sets of permissions. And so when I think about these workload identities, I still have requirements around their security, uh, maybe alerts around what's happening to them. So workload identities brings together capabilities around conditional access, around identity protection, access reviews, logging for these identities that are not used by some human being. And then there's a whole set of other technologies that we think of around identity governance. Now, many of these we've had for a long time. We think about entitlement management. This is where I can create access packages that comprise of um, group memberships, application assignments, SharePoint sites, and then I can configure certain groups who are allowed to request the access package. Maybe it has to go through some kind of approval. Then they get that for some time box time. We have concepts like access reviews, where I can review or delegate or users can self review. Do you still need this group membership? Do you still need this application assignment? Do you still need this role to help again, stop that bloating over time of permissions? There's things like privilege identity management. So I can do that just in time elevation against Azure roles and Azure AD roles. But one of the nice new functionalities here is lifecycle workflows. And this is all based around the idea that if I think, okay, there is some company, and we always talk about the idea of as kind of the, the human being as the person, well, there's times that we join a company. So there's joiner, mover, lever. So I leave a company. And the focus on this today is the join and leave scenarios, not so much the moving within the company. And that I can consider, well, in those joining and leaving, there are things that I might want to do before they join, so X number of days before they join the company, maybe send out a welcome email, hey, go and order your laptop. There are things I might wanna do on the day I'm actually hired. And likewise, on the, when I'm leaving, there might be things I wanna do in advance of leaving, on the day I'm leaving, and even post, maybe I'm joining some uh, Illum, Illuminati um, set of groups so I can stay in contact with other people. And what Lifecycle Workflows does is for all of these, I can define a set of tasks that based on attributes of sort of hire date and leaving date, I can say, hey, 
uh, a certain number, end days before, end days before, end days post, and obviously on the day, perform these various tasks. And there's a whole set of these actually built in that you can base this off. So if I was to go and look at my identity governance and then lifecycle workflows, we'll see that I actually have um, some created for onboard pre-hire and then real-time employee termination. But if I say create, you can see there are ones around joiners, so pre-hire and actual day of hire, and then lever, real-time employee termination, pre-offboarding, offboarding, and post-offboarding. And all of these consist of various tasks. If I was to go back and just look at one of mine and look at the tasks, there's a whole set of tasks that you can configure that might apply to only joining, might apply to only leaving, may apply to both. So I can just very easily go and configure those. And as part of one of these, I can define the trigger and I can define things like, well, how many days from the event do I actually want to do this? And that's really what Microsoft Entry is. It's a collection of technologies related to identity, both that centralized identity provider, working around decentralized identities, and then handling permissions, access reviews, and that full lifecycle management of your users. That concludes this lesson.